Hello, everyone. My name is Marcy Samuelson, and I'm Marketing Manager for the Developer Initiative here at Oracle. Thank you for attending today's Tech Classroom, Integrate Security into DevOps CICD Pipeline with New Vector. Before we get started, I would like to review a few housekeeping items. The webcast console you are looking at can be completely customized. You can resize and move any of the windows that you have open. At the bottom of your audience console, there are multiple application widgets you can use. If you have any questions during the workshop, you can enter your question in the Q&A area and submit your question. We have a number of Oracle experts on the call that are ready to help you. If you experience audio or screen issues, please make sure the audio is turned on in the media widget or press F5 to refresh your screen. This webcast will be made available on demand after the live event. You will be able to access from the same link as the link you used to access this live event. Again, thank you for joining the Tech Classroom Integrate Security into DevOps CICD Pipeline with New Vector. This webcast will be presented by Henrik Rosendahl, Head of Business Development at New Vector, Glenn Kosaka, VP of Product Management and Marketing at New Vector, and Gilson Melo, Principal Product Manager at Oracle. At this point, I will turn it over to Gilson. Thanks, Marcy. Hello, everybody. This is the Oracle Safe Harbor, and I'll give you a few sec seconds to read it. So let's talk about this slide now. Have to be here today with my new Vector friends to share some of the exciting things we're working together. But before we jump into new Vector's content, let me give you an overview about Oracle Container Engine for Kubernetes, also known as OKE. So why Oracle Kubernetes? OKE, for information, is a fully managed, scalable, and high available service that you can use to deploy your containerized applications to the cloud. Oracle Kubernetes is based on upstream versions supported by the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, or CNCF. So there's no vendor lock-in, and that also means that everything that you have tested so far with Kubernetes on-premises, for example, can be ported to OKE without the need to re-architect it. So use OKE when your development team wants to reliably build, deploy, and manage Cloud Native applications in the cloud. Let's talk about Oracle Cloud Native Services. So our services leverage the highly performant next generation Oracle Cloud infrastructure, also known as OCI. So these services, they can be categorized into application, development plus operations, and observability plus messaging. As you can see on this slide, we provide several Cloud Native services that combine it with OKE will give you a robust and scalable Cloud Native services environment. For example, we have streaming services, which is fully Kafka compatible, logging services, which is compatible with FluentD, for example, monitoring native service, notifications, events, API gateway, infrastructure as a code that allows you to run your own Terraform stack in the cloud through the resource manager UI option, along with functions and other services. Oracle is the only major cloud provider to deliver and support a unified cloud native solution across managed cloud services and on-premise software, supporting a seamless bidirectional portability of cloud native applications built anywhere on a framework. So as I mentioned in the previous slides, since the Oracle cloud native framework is based on open and conformant CNCF standards, it will not lock you in and applications built on that framework are portable to any Kubernetes conformant environment or any cloud or infrastructure. For example, let me give you a real example here. Applications running on WebLogic on-premises can easily be containerized or put into containers and then lifted and shifted into Oracle Container Engine for Kubernetes without re-architecting or rewriting any code. This makes the migration to public cloud easy. In addition to that, Terraform configurations can be reused across Oracle Cloud environments, 
be more defined to use in other cloud environments as well, and also be automated through the Oracle Cloud Resource Manager that I mentioned in a previous slide. So it's quite easy to get your Terraform stacks that you use on-premises and use in the cloud to provision your whole environment. So adding more details here, based on what we just talked about, I would like to share that Oracle um, I would like to share Oracle's contributions and leadership roles into the open source community. So, for example, Oracle is a platinum member of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and a member of the Open Container Initiative. So, on this slide, let's talk about Oracle Cloud Native and data management in general. So, Oracle is a second generation cloud infrastructure, OCI, provides bare metal virtual machines, containerized compute, GPUs for performance-intensive workloads, such as um, AI and machine learning, and a variety of cloud storage options like block, object, file, and archive. OCI offers a fantastic array of services for developers to build modern applications, and OKE uses OCI as the main platform for those services. In regards to the framework, and programming language options that we currently have available to our users, we don't restrict to one or two programming language options like other providers do. So you have the choice to use any programming language in framework you want, like Java, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, and others. You can also use any developer and DevOps tool as well. As well. In addition to that, we provide a set of free tools called Dev Developer Cloud but you can also use the ones you're familiar with, like Jenkins, for example, or Circle CI, or GitHub, GitLab. We also offer an integrated data platform for the enterprise. This includes our flagship autonomous database, but we also offer the choice of other databases, like MySQL. And we recently started offering my Microsoft SQL Server, Server to our users. Finally, we provide a number of services to help you manage and secure your applications. And New Vector Team will share more details in a few about how you can use their main full lifecycle container security platform with, with OKE, for example. Okay, let's talk now about OKE and OCRR, or Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Registry. So OKE is a developer-friendly and enterprise-ready managed service that runs a highly available Kubernetes cluster with control, security, and performance of OCI while keeping pace and compatibility with the Cloud Foundation ecosystem, like we said before. OKL support helms for ease deployment of your Kubernetes apps, for example. In regards to our uh, registry, OCIR is a highly available container registry that enables users to easily store and share their container images. OCRR allows users to push and pull images with Docker CLI, for example, or pull images directly into the Oracle Container Engine for Kubernetes deployments. OCRR is a Docker v2 compliant and can work with OK and other container engineers. So interoperability is assured with both products here. So let's talk about OKE and OCR pricing packaging options. The gray shaded area on your left side signates the functions that Oracle manages for our users, including an integrated registry and image storage in the container engine and managed Kubernetes. Oracle will manage the ETCD and master nodes of the Kubernetes instance, for example, in a high level availability setup for the customer. Upgrades to the newer version of Kubernetes will also be supported in the Container Engine dashboard within the OCI console. Customers will manage the cluster or worker nodes that are set up by the managed service for the instance in their own OCI tenants and account. That's the shaded area on your right side. About pricing, so I have some good news here for you. Users do not pay for any of the Oracle managed container infrastructure the gray area on your left side. This is a control plane that enables you to configure those services, maintain operations, versions, availability, etc. Users 
will pay just regular fees for compute, storage, and network using in the data plane, the blue, the blue area on your right side, where the applications will run and your data will be stored. Okay, now that you're a little bit more familiar with OK in general, let's talk about what kind of other services that you can use with your Kubernetes environment in the Oracle Cloud. To help you with that, we have enabled for our users the service broker. So service broker for Kubernetes is an implementation of the Open Service Broker API that you can use in a Kubernetes cluster to provision and bind to OCI services that your application depends on. It includes integrations with OCI key services like autonomous transactioning, processing database, autonomous data warehouse, streaming service, object storage, with additional integrations coming on the way. The main key benefits for this with the service broker is reducing the complexity in the app deployment. Okay, persistence with containers. Applications can be categorized as either stateless or stateful. Containers are well suited for stateless apps, but requires the use of external data store for stateful apps. So for example, stateless apps, they do not require persistence. They can be easily redeployable and they can be easily scalable as well. Example, website that serves the same page to all clients or static web page. While stateful apps, they require persistence. They are more useful for complex use cases. And as you can see on this slide, OKE and OCI provide services and capabilities for both stateless and stateful apps. Now, I'll transfer to my friends from New Vector and let them uh, explain and share all the cool things that we've been working together and explain the details of their application as well. Thank you so much, Gilton, for uh, introducing us to, uh, to OKE. My name is uh, Henry Grosendale. I, I run business development here at New Vector, and today we're going to talk about um, how to integrate security into your uh, DevOps pipeline, all the way from the very beginning to the very end. So New Vector covers the, the whole spectrum, um, but we're going to hone in on the integration of, of security into the uh, DevOps pipeline, also known as Shift Left. So as, as most of you will know, um, you know, transforming your, your business into uh, a Kubernetes environment means that you are developing um, a set of, of new containers and, and microservices. And, and that will allow you to run it at very large scale. Um, it will also allow you to uh, release software a lot faster, but, but you need to run in a highly automated fashion uh, in order to take advantage of the of the Kubernetes platform. When you are running in a in a Kubernetes um, environment, you know, you are running at, at sort of a, a hyperscale. That's what the platform is, is is built to do. And and you know, unlike traditional um, applications, a, a containerized application uh, will essentially give you an explosion of east-west ne network traffic. In other words, all these containers are now networked together, and you don't have a dozen or 50 or 100. You might have 500 or 1,000 containers all talking to each other on the network. So it is critically important that a part of your security posture in Kubernetes is, is monitoring the, uh, the network traffic. It's also because the, the volume of the network traffic is so high, you, you have a fairly low visibility into what's, what's going on unless you have something um, like New Vector in, in place. On top of that, you know, running a Kubernetes environment means that you probably have a bunch of, of open source libraries uh, built into your container images. And you've got to make sure that you uh, scan for vulnerabilities and make sure that none of those critical vulnerabilities end up in your, in your production environment. And because this is all sort of like a fairly new environment, a lot of new procedures, a lot of new people, a lot of new uh, platforms, um, you know, you can, you can end up being, um, you know, basically suffering some, from some very sophisticated insider attacks. 
And all of this is, is what we're going to cover, cover today. I'm going to give you a, a brief introduction to New Vector and New Vector's latest release, 3.0. And then I'm going to hand it over to uh, Glenn Kosaka, who's going to give you a, a great in-depth demo in a little bit. You know, if, if you look at um, a containerized environment, um, you know, in many ways, it's, it's, it's uh, vulnerable to the same types of attacks as, as a traditional solution, except for the fact that, you know, most of these environments, um, you know, do not run in an on-premise data center anymore. They run in the public cloud, such as OKE, which means that you have blurring security perimeters, in particular, if you're using existing data from an on-premise database and you're using that in an application running on Kubernetes in, in the cloud. Also, um, all this traffic, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's really, really hard to gain visibility into all that network traffic, um, as well as Kubernetes is, is so autonomous that it's essentially just dictating IP addresses and port numbers automatically. So it's very, very hard for traditional solu security solutions to, to lock down this environment in, in any sort of traditional fashion and, and use the traditional methods. Hence the need for something like New Vector. Here you see an example from, from Experience Kubernetes environment. This is a, a very large and very complex environment. And you can see that um, you know, all the little blue squares in, in, on the screenshot here are all you know, uh, live, live containers. And all the blue lines between them are all network connections um, that are, are recorded in, in real time. And you see little red dots on some of these containers as well, and those are containers that, that have high priority vulnerabilities in them. So as you can tell, it, it gets pretty complex pretty, pretty quickly. What, what, you're, what you really um, need is, is, is sort of a, an end-to-end container-specific workload protection platform such as, as New Vector, where you start with your security posture all the way from the beginning in terms of doing hardening compliance of, of both your nodes and your environment as well as all your images. You need to make sure that you take care of, of vulnerabilities for the images as, as, as well as, as the nodes. You need to uh, put in place a, an appropriate network application segmentation such that um, only certain services can talk to, to each other. Um, and then, you know, with, with New Vector, you have a, a very uh, strong behavioral baselining um, in place that basically allows us to pick up on, on any new activity, whether that is network activity, processes, or file system activity, and, and use that as a, as a baseline for um, for preventing um, threats and, and also responding to them. So not only are we uh, monitoring your environment, we will also prevent you know, new processes from running and new network connections, um, prevent them from, from actually being established if, if you run in, in a so-called protect mode. There are really a, a lot of, of different um, things that you have to consider uh, when you want to implement cloud-native um, security. Of course, it all starts with the, the early stage of the, of the pipeline and of the build. And so New Vector offers integrations directly into your favorite tools, such as Jenkins, Bamboo, Circle, and, and, and other, and other uh, CICD platforms. We also have you know, vulnerability scanning of, of, of all the images in, in basically all the, the popular container um, registries. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we perform an automatic compliance check, so we do CIS benchmark for both Docker and, and Kubernetes, um, as well as implementing something called admission control that basically allows you to set up rules that have to be followed before you can push an image from development into production. That could be a certain number of vulnerabilities, can't be deployed in production, you can't have root access, so on and so forth. You decide what rules they are and, and how strict you want them to be. Um, we also, of course, uh, integrate into the, the sort of the, of the favorite monitoring tools. It could be Splunk, it could be you know, uh, Syslog, Prometheus, Grafana. Uh, we also have a, a real-time notification 
feature with with Slack and 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 using webhooks, so you can get basically real time events into into where you we need them to go. And on the on the back end, you know, of course, we we provide you know a Helm chart for for deployment. We integrate directly into the OKE and Kubernetes platform, and then we also do um, you know our back um, integration. Active Directory, LDAP, SAML, et cetera, et cetera. This is kind of the outline of the demo that uh, Glenn is going to show you in a little bit. And it, it really shows where you should implement the different security measures in your, in your full life cycle of, of your Kubernetes environment. Um, the, first, the first sort of step you should take is, is integrating the um, security into your build server, right? So as, as you're building the image from, say, Jenkins, um, you know, New Vector will, will look at that image and, and basically pass it or fail it depending on the specifications of, of number of vulnerabilities, et cetera, et cetera. And it will create a report instantly, send it back to the DevOps guys, and, and they can clean it up, and, and eventually the image will, will pass its first gate. The second gate, as you see to your lower left-hand corner, is what's called the Kubernetes admission control. Again, you specify what controls you want to put in place, and it basically will either allow you to push an image into production or, or fail that push, and, and you have to go and, 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 and clean up whatever, uh, whatever failed the, uh, the, uh, the push into, into production. On the on the runtime side, um, there is a there's a whole bunch of different things that, that you need to uh, be aware of, and, and this is really where where New Vector excels. Um, first of all, you you really should like in any other runtime environment put some fairly um, strict controls around the egress and, and and ingress of of your environment. And for that purpose, you know New Vector has uh, the only true layer seven firewall, and it will basically inspect all the traffic going in of your cluster and out of your cluster. You also need to do, you know, pod to pod or, or east to west traffic um, monitoring. And again, New Vector will do that and inspect all the traffic. So if you have any lateral movement, um, you will be able to, to identify that and, 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 and shut that down. On top of that, you need to put in sort of runtime security, and, and by that I mean monitoring processes and new processes. It could be privilege escalation happening or, or new file system activities. And you've got to be, be watching that in, in, in runtime, as well as making sure that from a, from a host standpoint, um, you're cleaning up sort of like the, 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 the common configuration um, mistakes that, that people do, and, and for that we use uh, PAS benchmark as well as you know custom custom checks that you can you can put in. All of these events um, obviously will end up in Syslog, and from there into your your, your SIM tool. Um, we can also do uh, compliance reports. You can run them on a on a daily basis, um, and also a, a risk assessment. Um, that will tell you where you're at and whether or not your uh, security posture is 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 uh, is increasing or or decreasing over time. Here's sort of the the, the list of, of features from our um, latest uh, 3.0 release that we uh, we announced only about um, a month ago. So first, you know, New Vector is just another you know, container. And we, you, we deploy as a single container on, on every node. We're, we're not a sidecar. We're not an agent. And you don't really need to um, modify your container images to deploy new vector. As, as such, we're just another container sitting alongside with the containers that we protect. You know, right out of the gate, we start looking for um, malicious activity, both in your network, with processes and file systems. So without any configuration, we will start looking for, for bad actors in, in your environment and, and tell you if, if we find any. On the, on the DevOps side, you know, the whole shift left, um, you know, we talked about integrating into Jenkins and Bamboo and, and Circle and do sort of the vulnerability scanning in there, as well as setting up admission control. Uh, we talked about the Kubernetes CNS benchmark and the PA, PCI controls for, for compliance. And then, you know, we're going to show you um, how New Vector has a security risk score and report 
that will allow you to give you a sense of where you're at and what you have to do to improve your security posture in, in the environment. On the, on the runtime protection side, we provide you with very strong behavioral learning that will basically profile your environment both based on network traffic, on processes running, as well as file system access. Um, and then, you know, we, we can basically go into a zero trust mode that will essentially shut down all new behavior. All new unknown behavior will either be alerted on or will be shut down depending on, on how draconian you want to be. And then, you know, as I mentioned, we're the, the only guys in the industry that can provide a proper layer seven uh, firewall for all the container traffic, both the ingress and the egress in and out of Kubernetes, as well as all the east-west traffic. And we do that with, with you know, deep packet inspection. And we've also just recently announced DLP for Kubernetes. In other words, you can be looking for stuff like social security numbers, credit card numbers, passport numbers, and making sure that they do not escape the, the defined uh, PCI zones. And then finally, um, we, we take automated response. So we can, we can block an individual network connection. We can quarantine a container. We can you know, take a packet capture of, of network traffic where we, where we think there's either some malicious content or it's just you know, not adhering to the policies. Um, and we can also alert you know, the, the systems that you already have in place. So we, we can you know, use webhooks for real-time alerting as well as you know, events that we can load into Splunk or Sumo Logic or any other stream tool, really. Um, and so, so that's 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 how we sort of integrate in the in the full life cycle. So, really, what differentiates New Vector out there, and the reason why our our customers are are coming to us, is because they realize that that no vulnerability scanning tool alone will keep all their sensitive data safe in production. Right? Just like you you spend um, a serious amount of money on on layer seven. Um, you know, next generation firewalls for your data center, you need to have something that is comparable to that level of, of security when you deploy uh, Kubernetes um, in, in production, in particular in the, in the public cloud scenarios. And so we're the only guys out there that can do proper deep packet inspection and, and data leakage prevention, as well as packet capture. And we do sort of real-time threat detection and inline prevention um, for, for basically shutting, shutting that down. We're also the only guys out there that's entirely Kubernetes native. So we don't need any instrumentation code, we don't need any agents, we don't need any sidecars. You know, essentially, as I mentioned, New Vector is just another container sitting on each node, inspecting all the traffic, and you have a centralized, you know, New Vector controller where where you basically set up the policies that will be pushed out to the nodes. And those nodes can even be across multiple clusters as I roll explain um, in, a, in a little while. And then we have, of course, very deep integration into, into Kubernetes and, and, and OpenShift, so, so we know a lot about the environment, and that's where we get a lot of our, our metadata. Okay, so let's talk about integration of new vector into the CICD pipeline. So what you see here is a screenshot of, of, uh, of a Jenkins pipeline. And you can see that, you know, if you look at the bar all the way at the top, you can see there's a, there's a red dot with a, with a failed vulnerability scan from, from New Vector. So as you've been trying to push this image out and build the image, you know, we basically failed the, uh, failed the image scan. Um, and you have to, you know, you can look at the screen, you can see what failed, what, you know, high vulnerabilities was there that, that failed to build. And you will get that report instantaneously. You go back and clean it up, and you can see that the the second build was was successful here. And so we've got a plug in for all the major um, CI/CD pipeline tools directly into um, our vulnerability scanning. We also, of course, do scanning of of all the registries, private registries. And so you could either do that based on on events, or basically do sort of a, a batch. Um, a batch scan, you know, every every 24 hours, for instance. This is a part of our new release called the, you know, policy as code, policy as YAML, call it CRD. This is something we're super, super excited about. 
This essentially allows the DevOps team, the developer, to define uh, a security policy for the application itself. One of the challenges in a, in a sort of a DevOps environment is that, you know, we still have, you know, separation of, of duties. And so the developer of a certain microservice will know the most about how this service is supposed to behave, what other containers it's talking to, if there are any external connections, et cetera, et cetera. So how do you make sure that this developer is, is having a say in the development of that, um, of that, of that security policy, right? So, so what we've done is we've implemented something called CRD that allows the application developers as well as the DevOps team to develop the application-specific policies while at the same time the security team can have more of a horizontal policy in place that is sort of more um, describing the, the broader security postures and, and the environment as whole. And then we basically um, merge the two policies in, in production. In, in other ways, this is the best of both worlds. You, you allow the security team to do what they're good at. You allow the developer to basically uh, describe the application behavior and, and as such, we lock that behavior down and, and that essentially becomes the um, security uh, policy. Example of the, um, the compliance and security posture. And so as you log into New Vector um, on, a, on a daily basis, you will see your, your risk score up in the upper left-hand corner. In this case, it's 71 and it's a poor risk score. So not only are we giving your risk score so you, you know where you're at, you can also see there's a, there's a little wrench that you click on, and that wrench essentially will, will, will load a wizard that will take you through the number of steps that you need to take to lower your risk score. You know, over time, if you have a, a PCI-compliant environment, you want to maintain a risk score of 20 or below, whereas if you have a test server, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. Right? And so different risk scores for different environments. And, and the power of New Vector is that it basically takes in, you know, to consideration both the network risk, the, the container risk, and the environmental risk, such as vulnerabilities and platform configuration. And so um, we will also give you the wizard, as I said, that basically hands hold you through the process. Because there's so many different little steps that you have to take to clean up this stuff that we felt that it was important that you can, can load this, this dashboard and we will basically guide you through how to lower your, your risk score for your environment. I mentioned earlier in my presentation that we have a very powerful behavioral learning um, that essentially you know, looks at the environment as it's running and learning from that and locking it down. Most customers have a fairly strong, um, you know, test procedure in place, and basically what you have to do is, is, is run the new vector in a learning mode, then run through the test, and then, you know, we, we might actually know 99% of everything that's going on in your environment. That can only, you know, that might only take a couple of minutes or an hour or so, but that's really all we need. We've, we've locked down all the network connections, all the file system access patterns, all the running processes, privileges, metadata, et cetera. And then, you know, any changes from that point on will either be denied or will be alerted on. And so this is a super quick and easy way to, to set up uh, policies, and this can be in addition to the policies you've already created using the policy as code with, with CRD. So those of you guys out there that are considering um, running Istio or running Linkerd, um, we also support that. And again, New Vector doesn't run as a sidecar. We, we're still just one container per, per host, but we do actually monitor all the Istio traffic. We also monitor all the uh, internal systems traffic that Istio is, is known to create. And even if, if the traffic appears to be encrypted on the wire, 
we actually have access to the unencrypted traffic before it, it hits the wire so we can do our deep packet inspection and, and, and DLP as, as well. And it's fully integrated so it, it won't conflict with, uh, with, your, with your Istio policies. So the last slides I'm going to show you here um, before I'm handing it over to, to Glenn to do the demo is, 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 the, is the power of, of, of actually implementing DLP or data leakage prevention into, into Kubernetes. So if you're running any sensitive information in a, in a Kubernetes service, such as credit card information or you know, passport numbers, social security numbers, you know, essentially we will look at the payload of each network packet and make sure that only you know, certain zones will we'll be able to handle these sensitive information and then you can set up a, a basically a security perimeter and and anything that will try to escape that perimeter that to be a you know an external site or or even just to another service on the same cluster that will that will all be be shut down as if this was a you know uh, an attack or a threat or 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 similar the uh, the last slide that I'm, I'm going to show you and, and one of the new features we have in, in our 3.0 release. Um, so we just released uh, multi-cluster support. Again, um, it basically allows you to, to control multiple clusters from a single pane of glass. Not only will you gain visibility across multiple clusters, those multiple clusters can also be different environments. So you can have a, an OKE environment, you can have a native Kubernetes on-premise, you could even have a Red Hat OpenShift environment, and, and you know, so long as, as new vector is installed in these three environments and they can see each other on the, on the network, you can manage it both from a visibility standpoint as well as pushing uh, you know, application and, and security policies out to, to the individual clusters. So with so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Glenn Kosaka for the demo. Okay. This is a demo of New Vector protecting workloads running on Oracle Cloud. So I'll start with my Oracle <coughs> Cloud or OKE um, interface here, my console. And if I go into developer services, I will see my container clusters. And I could see my cluster here that I've created. <coughs> and uh, it's very easy to create this cluster, just a couple clicks, and then, uh, then I can use these instructions to access my kubeconfig. Um, you can see my node pool. I've got four nodes uh, running Kubernetes version 1.13. So just accessing kubeconfig um, enables me to access my cluster. <clears throat> so if I go into my terminal, uh, I can show you my nodes <clears throat> that are running. And I can also see my pods that I have deployed as my demo workloads. Uh, you can see here I've got uh, Nginx pod, which is talking to three Node.js pods, which is talking to a Redis pod. I've got uh, MySQL running. And then I also have some test containers that will help me run this demo as well. <clears throat> so now I'm going to switch over to my new vector console. Uh, I've deployed new vector. And uh, after you deploy new vector and log in to the console, then you're able to start seeing the start with the dashboard. Uh, the dashboard is really uh, going to summarize your risk of exploit. And at the beginning, your risk is going to be very high, as you can see here, uh, mainly because all of your services are in an open state. They're not yet protected by new vectors. So they're in this discover state. <clears throat> and by auto scanning all the containers and hosts, we also have seen 78, 798 uh, high or critical vulnerabilities in the containers running. So that's why our security risk score is high. And I'll come back to that uh, to reduce that in a minute. We also will discover all of the network activity uh, and the pods that are running. So you could see here, this is the Nginx pod that we took a look at, the three Node.js pods talking to the Redis pod. 
And I filter by the demo namespace because in a complex environment, you could have hundreds of services and pods and thousands of pods and namespaces. So it's easy to, uh, to, to filter if needed. Now this is in the initial discovery state. So New Vector is learning all the behavior based on, for example, if you're running this in a test environment, running test traffic through here. And New Vector is gonna learn all the network connections and whitelist those. Uh, as well as um, <clears throat> all the process and file activity. Uh, if we take a peek beneath the covers, we can see indeed that New Vector has discovered all of the four or OKE or Oracle Linux servers here. Uh, we also can see that the vulnerability scan of these has been completed. Uh, Oracle's doing a great job because there's no high vulnerabilities on these hosts. <clears throat> And uh, we can also see that the new vector enforcer has been deployed as what's called a daemon set or daemon set. And that makes sure that one of our protected containers is uh, running on every worker node in the cluster and protecting it. These enforcers are containers and they're managed in our control plane by a single controller. Uh, we have deployed three of them here for HA reasons, and if there's a failure of one of the nodes, then one of these other controllers will take over immediately. <clears throat> so if I look at my terminal view of this, I can see that uh, in my Oracle environment, I've also deployed my new vector pods. <clears throat> And we can see here the three controllers, the enforcer. There's also the manager pod, which is a container that uh, exposes the web console that we are looking at. So we're in that discover mode, as we uh, mentioned. <clears throat> so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to <clears throat> uh, access my uh, test container or my exploit container to help me do some of these tests. <clears throat> And I'm going to initiate some of the client traffic. So I'm running some tests. Uh, but as I mentioned, even in the discover mode, we are looking for suspicious network connections and uh, suspicious process and file system activity. So even in the discover mode, I'm, I'm going to launch a DDoS attack, which is a ping death attack. Uh, we can see the ping death attack. And then uh, I'm also going to try a SQL attack. This um, is going to try to log into my SQL container. Uh, it's gonna generate a bunch of alerts, uh, webhook alerts, special webhook alerts, and um, <clears throat> we're gonna be able to uh, see what happened. All right, so I've got my special container running that's uh, monitoring for webhook alerts. <clears throat> now I'm gonna go back and then let me uh, uh, redo that um, SQL injection. Uh, or SQL login attack. And this would be the same as if uh, this was a SQL injection attack that New Vector was detecting. So you can see here down below in my special container, we're receiving these webhook alerts from New Vector. We are forwarding this to our Slack channel. And we see that's going through okay. And then we're also um, using our REST API to um, initiate a packet capture. <clears throat> So let's go back into the new vector console now and let's take a look at uh, what we can see. We'll go back to the network activity screen. And uh, now we can see a number of things, uh, red lines that are showing up. So we can see here, this is the ping death attack that I initiated right here that was caught by new vector. We can also see this um, MySQL attack uh, highlighted here and uh, detected. And all of these are being logged into notifications and can be sent out through your uh, SIM system. If we take a look at this uh, exploit pod um, that's doing all these offending actions, we can also see here the, uh, the, an automated packet capture was started. Uh, what we did is uh, whenever there was a suspicious activity, we did a special webhook, and then we used the REST API to start a packet capture, which can now be downloaded as a PCAP file. <clears throat> so that's an example of an auto response, but we could also uh, create a rule that would auto quarantine a container as well, if there's suspicious activity. And as I mentioned, all of these are logged into security events. 
And uh, you could see here under the security events, the MySQL attack. Uh, we automatically capture the packet for those, as well as the ping death attack. You can see here, uh, if I click on the show packet, if there's any network-based attack, we will automatically capture the packet used in that attack as well. <clears throat> Let's go back to my network activity screen. It's still in discover mode, so, uh, but we can see here now that uh, generating the test traffic, we can see that the Ingenix pod was connecting to the Node.js pod using the HTTP protocol, and rule number 13 was created to whitelist that. We can also see that new vector detected uh, a connection between the Node.js pods and Redis using the Redis application protocol. So rule number eight was created to whitelist those connections. So that's the process of behavioral learning that goes on. And if I now review uh, my demo environment, I look at my Node.js pod and I look at my network rules, uh, I can see that, that I've learned a number of rules. Node can talk to Redis over the Redis protocol and Genix can talk to Node over HTTP. And uh, there's also a DNS lookup allowed here. <clears throat> So uh, there's also a custom rule here, and I'll explain that uh, later. So let's say that I'm comfortable with the network rules that have been learned, as well as all of these processes that new vector detected and whitelist. I can now go into uh, all of my containers, let's say, and let me just change them all at once to a monitor mode, where we're just going to monitor for violations of those rules that we took a look at. Now, um, I can change them individually, so you can have different services in Monitor and Protect, but for now, we're going to uh, change them all to just the monitor mode. Now, if I go back to my terminal window, uh, I can try a few violations. So the first one I'm going to try simulates an east-west uh, violation. So this, what this is going to do is it's going to exec into my Node.js pod, and then it's going to try to connect laterally or east-west to another pod. And you can see here I get a response, the normal response. Um, I'm also going to try a, another violation, so I'll show you that one as well. This one is an external violation, so again, I'm going to hack into my Node.js pod by doing a kube exec, and then I'm going to just curl, try to curl externally to google.com. <clears throat> so let's do that. Uh, external violation. And uh, so this again is going to connect to Google and you can see that that was successful. Now we're in the monitor mode, so we're going to allow all suspicious process and activities, um, but we are going to log those in notifications. So the first thing you could see here is my Node.js pod trying to connect laterally. Um, this is uh, an alert because there was no whitelist rule allowing that network connection. If I refresh my browser, I can also see this Node.js pod can, trying to connect externally to Google. Uh, let's see here, the IP address resolves to google.com so I can see where that uh, pod was trying to go to. And again, in notifications, I can see uh, the security events that are showing up. Implicit rule violation means that there's no whitelist rule, so therefore that's a warning. Now, as I mentioned, I can uh, switch any of the services individually into the protect mode. Uh, I can do it through the asset menu, or I can also just right click on a container and all of the containers in that group will be switched in the, in the modes. So all of my Node.js containers are now in the protect mode, which means that we are actually going to block suspicious connections, unauthorized connections, or uh, unauthorized processes. So if I go back into my demo environment, uh, I can do the same. Uh, external violations. So I'm going to try to connect to Google. And you can see here there's no response there now. And uh, I want to do my east west violation. And again, there's no response uh, from New Vector. Now, I'm going to do, um, 
I'm going to try to do a connection externally, um, which I've set up a custom rule for, which is to be able to connect uh, to google.com using uh, SSL. So not just HTTP. So if I do the same command, but this time I use SSL, then uh, you're going to see we do get a response. So let's go back into new vector and, and see what's happened here. So uh, a couple things that we'll note here is that now there's an X through this line going external. We could see here that uh, this connection using HTTP was blocked, not just alerted. Uh, so that connection was blocked, as well as my east west violation here was also blocked by new vector. We could also see here, if I refresh, that I now have this new line showing an SSL connection to an, e an external API service. If I click on that, I can see it's resolving to google.com and that hit a whitelist rule number one. Let's go, go and take a look at what that whitelist rule is. So that is a network rule that was created, a custom rule that allows Node.js to connect to an external API service using SSL. And for demo purposes, I have defined that external API service group if I look at that group as address equals google.com or, or star.google.com. Uh, but I could have defined it as address equals an IP address or an IP address um, subnet. Uh, so if you have a database running outside of the cluster that's just running on a VM and you need to allow external access to it uh, and control it and even specify what protocol is being used, um, you could specify from my Node.js pods or my, uh, <coughs> let's see, my Node pods to my API. And this time I can say any number of um, protocols. So if I have an Oracle database running, I can say this must use the Oracle database protocol. So that's a, an example of egress control, and we can do the same for ingress control. Uh, so that's a quick summary of all the runtime protections in New Vector. Uh, we focused on the network activity because that's the most difficult things to detect uh, that is unique to New Vector. But as we talked about, um, any processes that are not on the process uh, profile rule list are also going to be blocked. Any file activity, suspicious file activity, is also going to be blocked. Now, you can also define custom compliance checks in the form of scripts that can run on containers or on nodes. Those are for like uh, checking custom CIS benchmarks or just your own compliance checks. And in addition to that, we will run the uh, Kubernetes and CIS benchmarks on all containers and hosts. Now let's take a step back and uh, uh, move away from the runtime protections. Um, as, uh, as we mentioned earlier, we do provide a full lifecycle container security platform. So that starts with uh, vulnerability scanning during the build phase with various plugins such as Jenkins plugins. And then uh, also the ability to scan a registry for vulnerabilities. So in this case, you could see here my Node.js containers or images have been scanned in a registry. And the layered scan results show that of the 69 high vulnerabilities, four of them are found in this layer. And this is the command used to build that layer. So it makes it easy to get back to the development team to help them remediate that. We then are able to tie vulnerability scan results to admission control rules. So we're able to say, if there are too many vulnerabilities in a container, then block deployments. Uh, but we support any number of criteria, including vulnerability res uh, results, uh, blocking images that are running as privileged or root, uh, only allowing deployments from a production registry. So this is really the gatekeeper to prevent unauthorized or vulnerable images into the production environment. I'll show you a quick example of that. So if I am going to deploy a simple 
three Node.js uh, deployment. Uh, I can just try to create that. And what's going to happen here is Kubernetes is going to stop the deployment and going to webhook to new vector. And new vector is going to look at the rules and say, whoop, this has too many vulnerabilities and, and block the deployment as you can see happened here. So back in the console, if I look at notifications and the risk reports, I can see this event has been logged. Uh, this uh, creation of this resource is blocked because of rule number 1000, CVE high count greater than or equal to five. So that's an example of admission control rules. Uh, but if deployments are allowed, then new vector is immediately going to scan those containers for vulnerabilities. So if I look at my Node.js pods, I can see all the vulnerabilities in the running environment. I can also see any uh, Docker or, or Kubernetes benchmarks with a plot which apply or custom benchmarks with a, which apply. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple other things which I'll just talk to are uh, we can apply DLP sensors to uh, every connection. We can look for credit card data uh, social security numbers, or you can add your own regular expression pattern matching and we'll look into the network payload for that sensitive data. And we can even block those connections. You can also create higher level response rules uh, that do things like automatically quarantine a container. So if I want to say in one of my pods that there's a uh, container suspicious process, I want to qu automatically quarantine that container. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, and if there's uh, false positives that you're seeing or you want to suppress any kind of alert, you can also suppress the logging of that uh, events. Now we also do support multiple clusters uh, managing. So if you had multiple clusters, you could go into this multi-cluster interface I could select this to be my master cluster, or uh, if I already have a master cluster and I want to join this to another master cluster, uh, I can do that here. And, uh, and then from that master cluster, I'll be able to manage multiple Kubernetes OKE clusters, or even cross-cloud, uh, on-prem, public cloud uh, combinations. Now let's go back to the dashboard and we could see that uh, the, um, in the dashboard, uh, my, my risk score has gone down dramatically. And the reason is that all of the uh, containers are now protected by new vector in a monitor protect mode. So even if we have vulnerabilities, there's virtually no chance that an exploit could happen, a vulnerability exploit, malware can start or uh, network attacks, zero day attacks could happen without new vector detecting that and in a protect mode blocking that. Let's talk a little bit about how to deploy new vector. Uh, we support Helm charts to do automated deployment uh, with config maps. Uh, also, it's very easy to just use kubectl with our sample YAML file to deploy all of the components that you saw. They're just containers which can be deployed and managed um, just like any other Kubernetes workload. And let's say that uh, this is your test uh, uh, or a staging environment. You have learned all the behavior, optimized your rules, and now you want to uh, push these into a production environment without having to go through that learning process in production. We support what's called policy as, as code through a mechanism called CRD which is a custom resource definition. So what we're able to do is select the demo stack that I just uh, reviewed, and I'm able to export all of the rules that were learned and created uh, for new vector into a Kubernetes native YAML file. This is your security policy as code. So this is in a familiar um, Kubernetes uh, deployment YAML format, uh, but it uses a custom resource called a NV security rule. You could see here, for example, Nginx in the demo namespace um, is allowed to call, talk to the kube DNS system. 
can also talk to the Node.js containers using HTTP. Uh, if your dev team, when you review this, says, oh, well, we're also going to allow SSL connections, we simply add SSL as a protocol that should be allowed. We also see the process rules that allow certain processes to run in the container. And again, we can add or delete those if those are not accurate. And finally, we see the policy mode that this is going to enter in the monitor mode. Uh, if we wanted to change that to the protect mode, we could say that as well. And once we all sign off on this, this becomes V1 of this application stack security policy, which we can use in our change management system. And then we simply kubectl uh, create this YAML file in our production cluster. And all of these rules will then show up uh, as CRD rules in my production cluster. The good thing about CRD-based rules is that the admin cannot make any changes through this console of any of those rules like you can do here. Uh, here I can see these rules, I can change or delete the rules. Uh, once I push them into my production cluster through CRD rules, if I need to change them, they must be changed by editing that YAML file. And, uh, and then typically you would save that as V2 of your um, security deployment and you'd save that in your change management system. So it's really the security policy of record for all of your um, runtime protections. All right, I think that's a good overview, quick overview and demo of New Vector. I uh, hope you enjoyed the demo. Thanks, Gilson, Henrik, and Glenn for this very useful presentation and to all of you who attended our webcast today. This live webcast has been recorded and will be available using the link you used to access the webcast originally for this live event. Please feel free to access the link in the resource list to sign up for another live event or access one of our other on-demand webcasts. If you have questions about what was presented today, feel free to email the presenters directly and when this webcast ends, you will be presented with a survey. Please tell us what you think so that we can make these webcasts more useful. We hope you have a great day.